Search and rescue carried out during a fire incident needs to be done bravely with wisdom. Act fast, but with patience and focused strategy. Show personal courage, but combine it with excellent teamwork. There is a saying, knowing your enemy itself is half the battle won. The fight against fire is no different. First of all, we need to understand the nature of fire. Fire is by definition a chemical reaction that gives out heat, light and smoke. Three crucial factors need to happen together for any fire. Heat to start, air or oxygen to keep burning and fuel to burn. Cut out any of these three. The fire will die a natural death. The nature of fire accidents in various locations differs. It's important to understand and appreciate these differences and operate accordingly. Hey, क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ फायर के ऊपर कार्य करता है इसका क्लासिफिकेशन होता है ए बी सी डी ये क्लासिफिकेशन में क्लास ए क्लास बी क्लास सी एंड क्लास डी क्लास ए फायर दिस इज अ फायर इन्वॉल्विंग कंबस्टेबल मटेरियल्स ऑफ ऑर्गेनिक नेचर लाइक वुड पेपर rubber and some plastics here the cooling effect of water is necessary use carbon dioxide with water but be careful do not use this on live electrical equipment plus b fire fires involving flammable liquids or solids generally industrial fires here a blanketing effect is necessary so use mechanical foam fire extinguishers class c fire fires involving inflammable liquids gases and electrical appliances in motor pump rooms or laboratories etc use carbon dioxide based and dry powder type extinguishers but remember to ventilate the room immediately afterwards to prevent asphyxiation class d fire fires involving combustible material like magnesium aluminium zinc and sodium etc these materials are reactive to water and require special techniques to douse it is important to use extinguishers that chemically interfere with the combustion chain using dry chemical powder helps but should always be done after thorough research on the nature of the fuel and combustion pattern A safety plan is the lifeline of any search and rescue operation. Whether we going to allow any kind of obstruction nearby the building or not. In team meetings, identify the potential risks and keep a safety plan ready. Big structures like multi-storied buildings, shopping malls and factories are likely to have an emergency evacuation plan and this comes in handy during the search and rescue operation. Whatever may be the quantum of fire, the core steps of search and rescue remain the same. 
methodically isolate the burning structure from its surroundings and deal with casualties outside the burning structure. Give them first aid, make them comfortable and take inputs about the situation inside and assess the number of people that might be trapped inside. Stage 2. Establish contact and retain contact with those trapped inside the structure and formulate a strategy on how to reach them. Make a list of likely survival spots within the burning structure and take all measures possible to scan these places for any signs of survivors. Formulate a strategy when a contact is established and save the contact. रेस्क्यू के लिए सबसे मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट है उसके इक्विपमेंट्स जिसमें मूलता मैनुअल मैकेनिकल इलेक्ट्रिकल और निमेटिक और हाइड्रोलिक टूल्स का बहुत बड़ा एक रोल होता है टूल्स आर क्लासिफाइड अकॉर्डिंग टू देयर यूज सर्च टूल्स इक्विपमेंट एंड एक्सेसरीज रेस्क्यू टूल्स इक्विपमेंट एंड एक्सेसरीज ऑपरेशन सपोर्ट इक्विपमेंट पर्सनल प्रोटेक्टिव इक्विपमेंट जिसमें मूलता गम्बूट टांगे हैंड ग्लोव एयर प्लग आई शील्ड और हेलमेट क्योंकि जब भी इजाजत में काम करेगा उस वक्त डेब्रिज या आयरन रॉड या और कोई भी ऐसे ऑक्सीकल या केमिकल इस पे जो फायर में काम कर रहा है उसको चोट ना पहुंचाए इसलिए पर्सनल प्रोटेक्टिव इक्विपमेंट को पहना जाता है A rescue worker requires understanding on the types of knots required to reach a space that seems impossible to reach and also for successful rescue operations. Thumb knot Clove hitch Round turn and two half hitches Draw hitch. Reef knot. Chair knot. on the bite ship shank Besides these, there are lashings that are used to secure two or more poles together. Stretcher lashing using a blanket is something that all rescue personnel should practice and be perfect with. Place the blanket diagonally on the stretcher and place the patient. Fold over the leg end, tucking it between feet. Wrap the two sides over the patient, the right side first. and tuck in wrap the head end around the neck of the casualty secure the neck 
and the end in front with a safety pin. The main operator sits on the right side of the stretcher near the head end with the rope in his hands. The clove hitch is tied on the right head side stretcher handle. The rope is then passed down the side of the stretcher for about 18 inches and taking a complete turn over the chest of the casualty, a half hitch is formed under the stretcher, passing the rope further down the right side. The ankles and the feet are secured with a hitch and the rope passed under the ankles on the other side. The rope is now on the left side. It is then hitched through each loop formed around the patient and the other end tied with a clove hitch on the handles. The lashing is complete now. The leftover rope is coiled and placed below the blanket under the head of the casualty to serve as a rough pillow. In a fire rescue operation, ladders can be the key to survival and they play multiple roles. They could be used to rescue casualties from upper stories or basements or for bridging a gap. They can also be used as backup for stretchers or derricks. It is crucial to learn the types and uses of different types of ladders. The hook ladder, 13 feet 4 inches or 4 meters. The extension ladder, 35 feet or 13.5 meters. The ladder should be placed at a distance from the base of the wall equal to one-fourth of the working height of the ladder. This is the safe working angle of pitching a ladder. And now, some tips on how to use the ladder more effectively. Always pitch the ladder with more space on the left side. The head of the ladder should be well over the sill of the window. It makes your job easier to step in or step off the ladder even when carrying down a casualty. Always remember the following while climbing the ladder. Climb steadily, keep your body erect, arms straight and look upwards slightly. The climber should not watch his feet while climbing the ladder. Place your feet towards the center of the rungs of the ladder. The hands should move smoothly at a ground level between the waist and the shoulder. The rungs should be grasped by both the hands, keeping the palms down and the thumbs under the rungs. Both hands should never be on the same rung at the same time. When ascending or descending the ladder, the hands and the feet should move in unison, which means the left hand moves with the left foot and the right hand with the right foot. And now, some details about actual fire rescue operations. In a fire situation, the first step is to assess from the locals if there is anyone still trapped inside the burning structure and then start searching from the top of the building and move downwards. Search swiftly and thoroughly. Do not overlook any possible hiding place. Wherever possible, work in pairs or in a team. To search inside a smoke-filled room. Do not throw open the door of the room suddenly. The heated gas and smoke inside may overwhelm you. Open the door slowly while in a crouching position to allow the hot gases and the smoke to pass over your head. In case the door of the room opens outwards, place one foot against the bottom of the door and open gently. This will protect you from injury because the door might swing open all of a sudden due to the formation of high pressure inside the room. Enter the room in a crawling position and always move in the same posture 
as there is less smoke and hot air near the floor. Cross the room diagonally to ensure that no one is lying in the middle of the room. Once you reach the victim, it is important to retain a positive attitude. Remember, the victim is afraid and is fighting for his life. Your attitude should reassure him and make him confident of his survival. Provide the victim medical attention as soon as possible. In fire situations, it is almost always necessary to evacuate the victims to a safe spot. A search and rescue professional needs to know and practice the following emergency methods of rescue. Pick a bag. If the victim is conscious and able to hold on. Pack a bag, like the pick a bag, but in reverse position. Human crutch. This is like a three-legged race. The rescuer stands at the injured side and each person steps off with their outside foot. The fireman's lift. This is crucial to rescue an unconscious person and also allows the rescuer a free hand. The fireman's crawl. Turn the casualty onto his back and tie his wrists together. Take the loop formed by his hands in your neck and drag him while crawling. This method is used when the victim is too heavy to be lifted. Removals downstairs. Ensure that the victim's head lies on your chest and gently ease him downstairs. Bowline drag. This involves turning the victim on his back and securing his hands. Then secure him with a lash and tie a bowline at each end to form the loops. The knot has to rest under the head of the victim and the rescuer pulls him out of danger through the harness which is the other end of the loop. Toe drag. As the name suggests, the rescuer first secures the arms of the victim, places his feet under the victim's armpit and with both hands free, pulls him out of danger. Similarly, for a two-member rescue team, look at these pictures carefully to understand the techniques. Fore and aft method. Seat. Four handed seat. Chair carry. Clothes and blanket lift. Normally, Four persons are required for this lift, but two persons can also manage in extreme cases. Apart from the cloth in which the casualty is placed, the rescuer also needs to grasp parts of his clothing. Improvise stretchers. During shortage of stretchers, it is always better to improvise. Use an old door, a sheet of galvanized iron, 
a blanket or a short ladder. All of these make good makeshift stretchers. Operational safety, fire rescue operations are different from other disaster rescue operations. The situation here changes with every passing moment. For the first responder team, safety first is not just a ground rule, but an absolute must for survival. to issue alerts and alarms through a pre-decided whistle alert system. Long whistle stands for stop all work and listen. One long, one shot stands for continue work. And three short whistles mean evacuate immediately and reach safety zone. To identify and establish a safety zone within the operational area and communicate the same to every team member. To keep handy medical first responder kit and ensure fast communication with medical team in case of emergency. Personnel rotation. To rotate rescue workers to retain efficiency. For instance, the rescuer might have to save a person trapped inside a burning vehicle. This situation entails taking extra care because here you are dealing with extremely combustible material in an enclosed space. Then, if need be, cut off the doors, check the victim for signs of asphyxia and give him or her immediate medical care. The fire has to be doused by cutting off oxygen to the source of fire. To handle chemical hazards, the rescuer has to maintain some crucial safeguards. High quality protective clothing is an absolute must here. Also, after the operation, the rescued person and the rescuer both need to wash themselves thoroughly. An eye wash followed by a complete body wash is imperative to remove all stains of hazardous chemicals. A rescuer should be ready to save victims from drowning. Throwing a life support to the victim is the immediate first step. Multi-level cranes come in handy to rescue victims trapped in high-rise buildings. In these situations, because it often takes time to reach the victims, it is important to retain contact with them during rescue to assure them. And to keep a medical backup ready, A flexible victim locating camera is an important tool to conduct search and rescue operations inside collapse structures. After being inserted through a small hole in the wall, this camera can help locate the precise position of the victim. The rescuer can then reach the victim through cutting doors and other similar access points. The victim might be stuck under rubble and debris of the collapsed structure. 
After removing them, he or she needs to be taken to a safe zone to provide immediate medical attention. The task at hand is often tough and dangerous. A careful planning and thorough training will keep you prepared for all eventualities. Always remember, more than anywhere else, it is important here to serve with a smile. This, despite the fatigue and high stress levels that will pull you down. The job of a rescuer is to assure and safeguard disaster victims, to spread hope in the face of the toughest of odds. Learn hard and perform with discipline. Be proud. Be confident. Remain responsible and save lives. जैसा कि आपने इस लघु व्रत चित्र में देखा कि कुशल प्रशिक्षण के माध्यम से खोज व बचाव कार्य सही तरीके से किया जा सकता है और होने वाले खतरे व नुकसान को कम किया जा सकता है और हमें इस बात की खुशी है कि आपके द्वारा आग से बचाव कार्य बहुत ही जिम्मेदारी पूर्वक किया जा रहा है खोज व बचाव प्रशिक्षण आपके लिए बहुत उपयोगी है प्रशिक्षण अच्छी तरह से लें तथा इसका निरंतर अभ्यास करें आपके उज्ज्वल भविष्य के लिए मैं हार्दिक शुभकामनाएं देता हूं। इन दिस वे यू कैन मिनिमाइज द लॉसेस दैट माइट अकर ड्यूरिंग सर्च एंड रेस्क्यू ऑपरेशंस एंड प्रिवेंट मेजर डिजास्टर्स फ्रॉम हैपनिंग, सेविंग लाइव्स एंड प्रॉपर्टीज